Hi, I'm Jamie, the Worcestershire cabinet maker, and I want to welcome you back. I'm going to do some more work on these chisels in typical YouTube style. I've finished them and I want to show you the process. But if you look at these chisels, you can see that the blades are all polished and shiny. What we're going to do is flit around a little bit and see how I achieved these polished backs, which I think you'll agree just look brilliant. I hope you enjoy this. I take it from really rough, terrible condition of the chisel, really. Uh, not, not through rust, but just through overuse on a worn out stone. And then get them to this polished finish, which just looks great. I mean, there you go. You can, you can see that that's pretty good. The better this face is, the more polished this face. The more polished the bevel is, the better the sharp edge is. So, so whilst some say, oh, it's not necessary to highly polish the back of a chisel. Well, it's not necessary, but it really improves your work. And if that's what you want to do, if you really want to improve your quality, then you need to have a polished back to your chisel. It's not easy. But with patience and a bit of care and attention to detail, we can take what some might have seen as ruined chisels. We can get them back to better than original condition. Let me know what you think in the comments. Comment halfway through the video, comment at the end, Comment at the beginning now, or if you, if you hate my beginning, if you hate the start. Jamie, what have you done? If you hate the start, great. Put it in, just do it. Jamie, I hate the start. If you don't like my hat, if you think the light's too bright, if this thing at the side of you is rocking a bit too much and you want to know what it is, put it in the comments. Right, let's get on with these chisels. Yeah, back of a chisel. It's not bad, is it? Look at that. Right on the edge, white line. That's it. So if you've been following some of my videos, you'll see. There you go. That one's done. This little one's done. These two need doing. And because there's a bit of rust on the end of there, I'm going to sharpen this up. It actually bends over at the end. It drops down. So sharpened with an oil stone, over sharpened, and let's see if we can flatten this out. Five minutes, and on uh, 400, five minutes, you can see what's going on. Low spot, low spot, but look how low the end is. It's very low, so I'm just up to there. This is going to take a while. It's just that bit on the end that's still not right. There you go. Looks terrible, doesn't it? Worn oil stones. The rest of it's coming up okay. There's a little bit of cross there, but that's only because I've been going different directions on here. But that's got to go down. I've, I've reduced that by 50%. Good thing is it's easy clean on the rest of it. So the rest will clean up pretty good quite quickly. Right, I've been cleaning another chisel up during the evening class with the guys. and When I'm not dealing with them, I've just been standing there sharpening look at that tiny little black line on the end of there it's just been pulled over the stone at um 10,000 grit about i don't know a few times there you go you can see better there you go i was after the, i was trying to twist it around so you could see it so yeah there you go that's what sharp looks like and the back i've also gone over these with the gary flex the back well, you can see the reflection underneath my lamp. This is my DMT stone. There you go. So the back of that chisel. Watch your finger, Jamie. Yeah, mirror polished, beautiful. That's another one done. The next thing to do to this one, I'll show you. The next thing to do to this is to go round here. It's got this rust, which I think has come off the packaging. So I've gone over the with the Gary Flex on the, all of these edges. Obviously, I haven't touched the back because the back has been polished. Look at that. Look at that back. It's absolutely stunning.
stunning. It's brilliant. So I've gone over all these other edges to get any little tiny specks of maker's varnish or spot of rust or whatever. So the next thing to do, and I'll do it tomorrow while I'm waiting for that to dry. I will just clean the rest of this chisel up and carry on with this little video about how I've cleaned this set of chisels up. Um, looking really good. The paint, I need to get that paint off. I'm doing all the handles in one go. That brass has gone a lovely colour. Yes, that's it. So what I'll do with this now, just so that you know, is I will just put it down the strop on on its back, just on the edge. Keep the top up, keep it up like that. Just like that, so that all of that back gets a little bit polished. But it's also to make sure there's no moisture there. And what I'll do in a sec is I'll just wipe it with this cloth. So I'm still working on these and, and look at look at these. Look at the so these are going well. Just done that one, that one, but I've got to show you this one. Look at that end, the way it looks like it's curling round. I've just put a straight edge on it, not like this, so I can see the light, and actually it's hollowed there. So that end might come off quite quick. So I'm just gonna go back to 400 grit. And I'm just going to flatten the back of that, give it a couple of minutes and I'll come back to you. So that's it. I'll put some pen on there. We'll have a look. So let's just have a look. So there you go. You can see the high spots coming off there and here. Look, this corner, it's not going to take too long. This won't take too long at all because all of this is hollow. So it's going to touch that point. It's going to touch this point, slowly work its way down. And I should imagine the middle won't get finished for a while before that tips. That tip will be done before that middle gets done. Let's have a go. And a minute later, that's where we're at. So look, there's only a bit more of that corner to do. In the middle, I was right. A bit more up this end, not much. So I think the middle will go before that very tip. But it's looking good and quick, much quicker than the others. But it is only the 3 8 so it's 10 mil wide. So there's not much steel to remove. Just that little corner there and see that bit on the side just there just those two bits let's get in there Got a wire edge now, so the wire edge needs to come off. Turn that over.
thousand grit now get rid of some of those scratches in the back just to um, minimize the use on the water stones I never said this was a quick job you can see the reflections on these now except for that one polished up really well they're good these are really rare and to get these in really good condition I'm going to get on with that one it's been 300 and it's been a thousand on a diamond and now I'm going to put it over there and it's going to have 1200 water stone and start the water stone process Oh, if you haven't seen my way of putting water on, don't use a spray bottle. I use a bottle with a loose lid and uh, it works great. It works great. It saves spraying everywhere, getting everything covered. Stopped doing that a while ago. There's a bit of cloudiness going on there, but it's not bad. 3,000 grit next. Six thousand grit. This is a nice six thousand grit. So it wasn't a cheap one. It's got cracks in it. I repaired it. Have a look on a previous video, and I'll show you how I repaired this. In a playlist called um, Sharpening, there'll be what exactly happened to this stone. Don't want to go over it again. If you enjoy my channel and what I do, you can donate and support the channel. If you scroll down, go to the thanks button which is just there hit that you can choose to donate two pound five pound ten or fifty pounds which helps me improve my channel cheers guys um but a, a, a six thousand grit that really did polish this was my main finishing stone for 25 years and then i got a 10k stone but this does this does a really good job and for what I was doing on the boats and work on that mahogany oak, then 6,000 grit was fine. And then I decided to go into a 10,000 grit stone. And it means there's less pressure on this stone now, that's all. Buy these good things when you can afford them. And turn them around. Let's have a look, see what that looks like. Okay, starting to get some polish on there. 8,000 grit. Looks like there's a crack in it there. Isn't it? Now this is one of these cheap stones, and this is to save wearing out the good stones just takes the pressure off them but it also proves that these cheap stones can do just as good a job you can get one of these cheap stones 3000 8000 grit uh, and a strop and you'll be just as good as any shapton or whatever else sun tiger king rand you will if you look after it and you know what you're doing you'll be fine good to practice on good to learn the ropes on and um as I've proved, I've had this about two years now. Oh, probably three years now. Does a good job. 
gets dirty, it will get dirty. So yeah, I know that this will take the shine back off, but it will help it. Let's go that way. There you go. That's a good thing to do. If I rotate that, you can just see the mirror finish. Look at that. 